Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, we are going to revise the Sabbath school lesson together this morning. As you know, the lesson is about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Uh, it is a very important lesson, according to me. Uh, I can say it's even a key lesson. It's a key lesson. <clears throat> so, uh, maybe the first thing uh, to know very well, or uh, that uh, may help us to know what we are doing, is to understand even what it means, the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Uh, the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of God. Sometimes in the Bible they use the kingdom of glory. And uh, sometimes they use the expression the kingdom of grace. Uh, those expressions uh, are important for us to understand. So uh, maybe my first question this morning will be what is according to you? What is the kingdom? That is talking about in the scripture. We hear all the time when we read the scripture, Jesus himself introduced it many times, and the Gospels, uh, also Pauline, in the Pauline epistle, it's very recurrent, and the book of Revelation also, we have the expression, the kingdom. So, uh, I don't know if you have a, a microphone who can help someone to answer, or to give a contribution, because this is a Sabbath school. So what is according to you the kingdom? The kingdom. What is the kingdom? When we hear the scripture, if you read in the scripture and we find the expression the kingdom, what comes in your mind? The first thing that comes in your mind. Yeah, there is a Father Abraham is there. You can go ahead. I think the, the room is not so big. <laughs> okay. so. Uh, for me, the kingdom is the kind of of Jesus. Uh, the kingdom is the kind of of Jesus. As we have already uh, said uh, at the beginning, there are two places of understanding the kingdom. We know the kingdom of glory. Yes. In both uh, cases, the first case, uh, you know, great Jesus Christ has come for the first time to the sister on the cross and they give forgiveness for the sinner. That's the kingdom of grace. So, uh, I, I, according to Father Abraham, uh, the kingdom, if I can t take your last word, is the reign of God, is the sovereign reign of God uh, among his people. Uh, Jesus says that, uh, uh, and it's, uh, it was surprising for many people when he says the kingdom of God is among you. Uh, what did he mean by the kingdom of God is among you? In your midst. That's what Jesus says. The kingdom of God is in your midst. Uh, Dr. Mora, want to, uh, to say something? Yes, no, you said very well that it's the dominion of God. Yes. Maybe we can understand that. The, when we see the, the picture in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, it means it's the kingdom of grace because we are living now and the kingdom of glory is when he will come back again. Yes. Uh, we are living now in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of grace, and we are expecting the kingdom of God. Uh, 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 it seems, uh, 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 like uh, Professor Mora says, that uh, uh, it seems that there are two realities. One reality is, uh, is going on, another reality is not yet there. But it seems like uh, the, the scripture uh, teach the Christian to live the two realities in one. I don't know if I'm wrong. But it seems to me that the two reality, the reality 
uh, yet to come and the reality already is uh, those two reality you have to live those two reality and why am i saying that those two reality have to be to 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 be seen in one as we are going as we live today is because uh, uh, in the prayer and uh, in the uh, in the section of the Sermon of the Mount, there is something very important, and is a is a portion of the scripture that we know very well, where it uh, it says that we have to seek the kingdom of God. You have to seek the kingdom of God. What it means, the kingdom of God? We have to seek a kingdom, and yet the kingdom is among us, and then we need to seek again the kingdom of God. What do you understand by seeking the kingdom of God? Actually, the lesson have, uh, according to me, this lesson have uh, only four important things, according to me, four important things that are practical for our life. Uh, the, the first thing is the, the seeking the kingdom. Say, seeking the kingdom. We need to understand very well because the scripture says that we need to seek the kingdom of God. What it means to seek the kingdom of God? Anyone? Yeah. Yes, um, Adventure. I believe, let us go by uh, the definition as the kingdom of grace. Um, I believe that grace is available. It is free for everyone. But uh, you need to what? Receive it. You need to acknowledge it. If you do not believe it, if you do not seek it, you will not know that grace is available for everyone. But it's left with you to what? Find the importance of that grace. For example, if I go to SM, there are so many things there. But... Uh, they are important to other people, but I don't, know the, I don't know the importance of it. So I will not seek one of those things that, that are many in SM. So I will only buy what I want. So the kingdom of God is within us, is, is available, the kingdom of grace. But we need to seek it. This is why we sing and we read from scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto you. So uh, our responsibility, uh, we need to also make effort. It's free, it is available, but it's not cheap. So we, we, the Bible says uh, in Luke uh, 12, it's, it's where the scripture is found, Luke 12, 31. Uh, it's, it says, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. This is a, a common uh, uh, scripture that uh, everyone knows very well. That means that uh, this is an important tax for a Christian. This is one of the, uh, uh, in Matthew, you will say, seek first. That means that that is the, the, the paramount uh, 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 exercise that a Christian have to do, is to seek the kingdom of God. And if you understand the kingdom of God as the dominion of God, as the ruling of God, uh, as the ruling of God, when we read uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer, the, the when, uh, the, the, we, we can say, uh, it says, uh, Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. At the end of the Lord's Prayer, it will say, uh, for him is the, 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 the power, the glory, uh, the power and the glory. And there, this expression also uh, uh, help us to understand that is the, the ruling of God that is introduced. That means that God has to be the one who is ruling in my life. Uh, and I think that when Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God, what he was in, in, in his mind was not a first, maybe a place, but not first, uh, maybe a space. He was thinking about God taking control of a life of a person. God being sovereign in a life of a person. God ruling all the life of a person. And, and I think that's why it summarized very well the, 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 what we call the, the second great commandment. That means that we should love God. We should, uh, should the first great commandment, we should love God with all our heart, with all our strength, all of everything. Means that God should be the center uh, and the edges also of our life. So the first thing that uh, the lesson wants us to to understand is that a, the kingdom of God is, 
is what we have to think, what we have to desire, what is our priority is the kingdom of God. So every other thing are okay. And the Bible says they, they can be added to you. They are, in fact, they are going to be added to you. Because when you have already the kingdom, and uh, Jesus, uh, Paul says that if God gave you Jesus Christ, that means that what else? What else do you need? If you have already Jesus, that means in Jesus, God has expressed all his love. Everything that he has, he expressed it in, in one person, in one sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So, if you have the kingdom of God, if you accept God to reign in your life, that will be, uh, 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 that will be uh, the first thing that we have to do. But the, there is a question. There, there is a, always a question because one time Jesus says that uh, uh, it's not easy for people who have uh, 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 riches, uh, for people who have money to, to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, maybe because they don't seek the kingdom of God. I don't know if uh, it's uh, because they don't seek the kingdom of God. Uh, I don't know if there are categories of people that will uh, not be part of the kingdom of God. Uh, if they will not be part of the kingdom of God because their priority is not first the kingdom. Maybe the things around the kingdom. I saw the answer of Dr. Sonare. to inherit the kingdom of God. It's not because of the riches, but it's because of the attitude, because most likely, or generally, uh, there's, uh, the Bible text says that where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Mm. And uh, I would like to comment on the relevance of the, uh, the kingdom of God now and the kingdom of God in the future of the glorious kingdom. For me, this is most relevant to Seventh-day Adventists. We have emphasized that the kingdom of God is the reign of God, and uh, the pen of inspiration clarifies and explains further that this kingdom of God is manifested in us through the perfection of the character or the hum of our human nature in the manifestation of the character of Jesus Christ in our lives in the present. And so that is why, what is the relevance of the future kingdom if the kingdom of God or the reign of God is not found in our lives today? What is the relevance or what is the use of that future kingdom or the coming? coming glorious kingdom if we are not presently living in the kingdom of God under the dominion and reign of Jesus Christ in the manifestation of his character in our lives. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, that's I pause to go to the, 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 the two important, the second important uh, area of our study is, uh, is what he says in Luke 11 uh, verse 2 in the Lord's prayer. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, I'll be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. So, uh, and then he will say, uh, and then he will finish and says, then uh, your kingdom, thy kingdom come. It's, a, it's a very important because uh, it's, it's part of the prayer. It's part of the prayer. One of the things that is important is that Jesus is teaching that we should pray for the kingdom. We should pray for that kingdom that we are taking, that the kingdom of God that we say is that this, the, the, the not yet also is a part of our prayer. Not only we have to seek the kingdom, that means that we need to... We, control over our life now, but we have also to pray for his reign, uh, as Father Abraham says that uh, for his plan of salvation to be complete, that means that the world will be completely, the universe will be completely free from sin. That is also our prayer, because even though we are living now, even though we are living the reality of God, even though we are close to God now, but around us, there are also many things that are not uh, 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 things 
that makes us happy. I, I, I don't think that if you are, if someone is living a good life and around you people are not living very well, you are going to be happy. Uh, you are going to be happy. Uh, there is a saying that we used to say in our language that there is no happiness to be happy alone. Uh, it's only when everyone is happy, and that I think that that's why God is saying that we should pray for the kingdom, that the reign of God will be totally, totally uh, manifest. The glory of God will be manifest. And that is uh, uh, one of the duty of the Christian. Not only we need to seek the kingdom for ourselves, but we need also to pray for the kingdom to come. Number three uh, important things is that, uh, and then Jesus says to them in Luke 9, you are, uh, uh, when he sent the disciple uh, uh, in verse 2, if you read uh, Luke 9, verse 2, it will say, And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. So the three important things that you have to do is to preach about the kingdom, to proclaim the kingdom. We need to seek the kingdom, we need to pray for the kingdom, and we need also to preach about the kingdom. And this is what an important duty, an important task of the Christian. I, I, and I think that this is a, 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 a wisdom of God to help us to preach the kingdom. Because one of the, uh, what I can say, one of the best things that can happen to, to, to us when we are preaching is that uh, we get transformed as well as we are preaching the gospel. It, it's first for ourselves. When we preach to others, we listen to ourselves sometimes also. And it helps us also to grow, to be prepared for the kingdom. So the last thing, because uh, it uh, remains only with three minutes to, to finish, uh, the last thing that uh, uh, it's important in this lesson is to, to live every day, each day, according to the kingdom that every day we need to live according to the kingdom. In, in Luke, I will read quickly in Luke uh, uh, 18, verse 29 and, and 30, it says, it says, so, and he called out and saying, Jesus, the Son of God, have mercy on me. Those who led the way were, were standing, telling him to be quiet. But he kept crying out of the, the uh, uh, and he says, Son of David, have mercy on me. So, what do you want me? Said Jesus, and, uh, and uh, I, I want to regain my, my reign, my sight, says, says the, the man. And Jesus says to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. Immediately he received the sight and uh, he, he went and followed Jesus. The Bible says that he followed him everywhere he was glorifying god because of what happened to his life so uh, 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 in the in this passage if you read very well the story we are going to understand that uh, when we receive the kingdom of god when we receive god in our life uh, it became a natural thing to follow god every day it's something that we we need to be close we want to be close to jesus that's why this man was following. Every time Jesus will heal someone, even he will say, go to your house, the person will not want to go. He want to be, to stick very close to Jesus. Be every time with Jesus. It's like a magic. When we encounter Jesus, when we encounter the kingdom, it became like a magic. We don't want to go out of it. We want to be close to Jesus. We want to follow him. So it may be, it's something maybe strange if someone says that, is with God, but he's not close. He doesn't want, he doesn't have the desire, the zeal to be always close to Jesus. That means that there is something wrong with his understanding of the kingdom. It, we can even say that maybe the person is not yet in the kingdom because there is a power when we encounter Jesus, like uh, what happened to Paul. We, you don't want to get out of it. You just want to follow, to follow every day of your life. It's not something that is false. It's not something that the church will say. It's not the leader of the church will say, come to the church or pray or read your Bible or go and preach or do these things. It became so natural because we are already part of a kingdom. 
So when you are already part, I, I, I'm a Cameroonian. I don't force myself to be a Cameroonian. I have my passport. Even though I don't have a passport, I know that I'm a Cameroonian. So I don't need to force myself. Right? When we come to the airport, when we know that you are, you are, you are, you are a Filipino, you just pass. It's us. They will say, stop in the immigration. And they are checking you everything. But for people who are part of the kingdom, that's why the Bible says that with the kingdom, with Christ, comes the true freedom. The true freedom. The person feels the, the, the freedom. The person feels the peace because of the closeness that we have with God. And uh, 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 it's understood that the kingdom is not a reality, something that is an idealistic something. It's God ruling in your life. God mastering, God being the first, God being the one who is in the center of our life. That's what brings joy. That's why uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, Jesus says that we should pray. Uh, we should pray about it because this is the, the essence of uh, Christian life to be part of the kingdom. So God says when we are then, the, 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 and that's why Jesus says that, okay, uh, since you are then part of the kingdom, you know what the kingdom is, and you leave the kingdom. And he, he says, go and tell the others what you have experienced and the joy you have experienced. And that is what we are, we are dealing with uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this forum, uh, to make disciples. That's what is discipleship. We, we do that now because we... We ourselves are followers of Jesus. We ourselves are part of the kingdom. We have enjoyed, we have experienced, we know the joy to be part of this kingdom. We know the privilege to be part of this kingdom. And we want, we desire people to, to come in the kingdom, to share with them, to have the same joy that we have. Because it's not good to be joy, uh, joyful alone. There is no joy to be joyful alone. So we need to call people to be part of uh, this joy. And I think that's why God is, uh, also, uh, is also making everything possible so that one day, you and I, we can experience the, the, the fullness of the glory of God and be joyful. And my, my prayer this morning is that we may continue to experience that uh, kingdom of God in our daily life, everywhere we go, and especially that people may ask you this important question, from which kingdom are you? We seem to be not like the other people. We seem to belong not of this area. That's why Jesus says that you are in the world, you are not part of the world. You are part of a special kingdom. May God bless us. Amen.